come in. Welcome. I am E.G. Marshall. Welcome to the sound of suspense. To the fear you can hear. What do you think about witches? Not the bony hags and atrocious crones of Shakespeare and legend. Or the poor unfortunates of Salem. But witches who are young. Witches who are beautiful. Witches who even fall in love. Excuse me. Who let you in here? Well, I hope I'm not disturbing you. I'm only trying to make a deadline. Well, if you're in the news business, I've got something for you. It better be good. I... I'm going to have to kill my wife. That won't be news till you do it. I know. I want you to know why. Okay. Why? Because she's a witch. Our mystery drama, I Warn You Three Times, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Joan Loring. It is sponsored in part by Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. I'll be back shortly with Act One. It's one of those miserable, stormy nights in the dead of winter. A thick, clinging, wet snow seems determined to smother the entire earth and everyone on it. You'd think that most people would choose the cheerful indoors, a warming fire, a relaxing drink, a comfortable bed. That's the problem with most people. You can't figure them. For instance, consider that line of cars crawling down Main Street, bumper to bumper, skidding, sliding. Where is everybody headed on a night like this? Have we become a race of lemmings? Do we follow some mysterious, unconscious drive? An interesting speculation, but we won't pursue it. We'd better consider the traffic, which has come to a complete standstill. A car seems to be stuck at the intersection. Let's go, sister. That light's green. Oh, officer. Well, what are you waiting for, lady? Uh, my, my husband. Your husband. That, uh, the light is red, and he said he wanted to step out and clean off the rear window. Uh, hey, mister. You finished back there? He just stepped out. It was a moment ago. Paul? Well, maybe he slipped in the snow. Paul, are you all right? Lady, there ain't nobody around the back. He just went out. Yeah, just to yeah, clean the... yeah, yeah, yeah. Clean the rear window. Uh, that's what you said. But what could have happened? Uh, just sit there a minute, lady. Hey, lay off of that horn. I know you got one. Now, what's wrong, officer? Did you see a guy get out of that car up there? Did I see a guy get yeah, out of Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you? Huh? Are the police after someone in the skate car? Oh, come on, Buster. Yeah. Just tell me. Did you see a guy cleaning off the rear window of that car up front? Well, to tell you the truth, I wasn't paying any attention. I was listening to the radio. Now, there could have been somebody, but then again, I, I couldn't say there was. It's not that I'm not trying to get involved, yeah, officer. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm a citizen. I know my duty, but... but yeah, yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you. Officer, where is my husband? He was just there. Lady, he uh, disappeared. How could he disappear? I don't know. I do know he ain't here. What am I going to do? Well, you can't keep blocking traffic, lady. you got to move on. Where? Well, I... it beats me. But you must find him. Look, you got troubles with your husband. That's your problem. But when you hold up traffic, but... that's my problem. Will you feed her a little gas, please? Come on, let's go. Let's but go. I can't. Lady, you got to go somewhere. I can't go anywhere. I don't know how to drive. Desk, Lieutenant Carroll. Yeah. Nobody wants this guy, you say? Well, technically, that isn't true. His wife wants him. Okay. Well, look who's here. Lieutenant? You won't win any Pulitzer Prizes around this joint tonight, Peterson. I was hoping you might have a little bone to throw me. Page one? I'll settle for two inches on the bottom of page 38. If you promise to remember two R's and one L. First name, Irvin. Not Irving. Lieutenant Irvin Carroll. We may have something shaping up. Ah. I don't know where it can go. 
Everywhere or nowhere. What have I got to lose? Sitting over there on the first bench. Ooh, that's nice. And married. Well, you win, you lose. A very, very weird story. Tell me about it. No, let her tell you about it. Why don't you ask her? Excuse me. Oh. My name is Fred Peterson. I... I'm a reporter for the Union Messenger. Oh, no, I don't want to talk to a reporter. Why not? Because I... Because you're afraid? Why? Could you put Tom's picture in the paper? Well, that depends. Has Tom done anything? He's disappeared. Well, we need the how, the when, the where. The when? About an hour ago. Where? On Route 986 at Main Street. How? I don't know. You see, we were driving south. It was snowing hard, and he said, I can't see out the rear window. The light was red. He stepped outside to wipe it off. He didn't come back. Where, where did he go? I don't know. Well, where could he go? I don't know. In that snow. And, and there's nothing around there? Could, could you give me a why? I... I can't imagine. I don't know what to do. I sit here waiting. Look, my name is Hetty Parsons. Tom and I, we've been married five years. We don't have any problems. I mean, we're very happy. If you print his picture in the story, maybe someone will see it who can help us. Excuse me a minute. Well? Yeah, I think I'll run with it. I don't blame you. I was always partial to girls with honey-colored hair and baby blue eyes. Ah, so you noticed, too. Have you run a check on her husband, Tom Parsons? Well, he's not one of the known bad boys. No record at all. And what did she say he did? He's an accountant. He has his own business in the Barstow building. You looked him up in the phone book? Checks out. They were headed south, huh? That's what she says. If it was a trip, there should have been bags. There were. His and hers? His and hers. How does it look? What do you want from me? I don't solve crimes. I sit here behind the desk. Come on, Lieutenant. Now, this is one for you, Fred. How could a guy disappear just like that? And in that storm. Hmm. There's no place to go. He could have had a car following in back of them. A friend was driving it, maybe. Well, he had to go somewhere. But why? Right now, we're treating it as missing persons. It's all we can do. He's not wanted for anything. He's a legitimate citizen, as far as we know. He hasn't even done anything to her. At worst, he left her in a car. He hasn't even deserted her. Yet. Who was driving? He was. She can't. Well, that's abandoning her, isn't it? No. At best, we'd have him for abandoning the car. Yeah. Yeah, excuse me a minute. Listen, Mrs. Parsons. Yes? Why, why don't you go home? I've got my oh. car outside. Oh, no, no. I, I, I want to be here in case they find time. They'll let you know if they find him. No, I don't want to be home alone tonight. I... I... Just want to stay yeah, here. But it may be hours. It may be even days. Don't say that. I'm sorry. I. I'm just so jumpy and so nervous. I can't believe what's happened to me. Well, if you're going to sit here, you should have some coffee and a sandwich. Oh, I couldn't think of food. I'll be right back. <laughs> Officer Dennis. Well, look who's here, the friendly reporter. Yeah, listen, that girl. Yeah, I was going to ask what girl, but yeah, I won't. Yeah, I, I, I want to start at the beginning. Oh, well, you know, Lieutenant Terrell's got two R's, but Patrolman Dennis got two yeah, 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 yeah. What did happen? Well, like she said, he went out to clean the rear window, and he was gone. Yeah, anybody see him? Uh, I checked the car in back, but who looks? Who notices? Yeah, where could he have gone to around here? Well, on the south side, you got open fields. On this side... A couple of warehouse buildings locked up. Night watchman? Yeah, he's a retired cop. No sign of anybody trying to break in, to hide, or whatever he may have wanted to do. Okay, so what could have happened to the guy? Well, it's all very interesting, but in 15 minutes I go off duty, and I won't have to worry about it. I didn't think I could touch a thing, but I must have been starving. Has there been any word? Yeah, you'll hear the minute they know. Now listen, Hetty, I can help you, but you have to help me. I'll do whatever I can. We have two basic roads to explore. One, somebody was out to get your husband. Oh, no. No! Tom is the mildest, sweetest, most obliging guy on earth. He has absolutely no enemy. That you know about. 
Tom and I have no secrets from each other. Everybody has at least one enemy. Tom is incapable of hurting anyone in any way. He sounds too good to be true. If he does have a problem, that's it. All right. The second road to explore. He wasn't pushed. He jumped. What does that mean? It means he walked out on you. Oh, it's, it's, it's inconceivable. Why? I've had a liberal education tonight, Mr. Peterson. Call me Fred. No, not yet, or maybe never. I've been introduced to a new world. I've been thrown in with people who basically don't believe in anyone, don't trust anyone, and perhaps they have good cause. Perhaps that's how life is in their world. Perhaps their world is the real world, but it isn't my world. May I ask, do you come from another world? It's entirely possible. I won't call you Fred unless and until we become friends. But that's just a little thing. The policeman who brought me here is a confirmed cynic. So is the lieutenant. And so are you. I must plead guilty as charged. All of you propose two basic hypotheses. A, my husband was ambushed by enemies. B, my husband abandoned me. You can't conceive of people who... They simply don't make or have enemies. You can't conceive of people who are completely in love. I'm not a fool, Mr. Peterson. I read these attitudes. What a wonderful world you live in, Mrs. Parsons. I hope you can stay there always. We're so dependent on each other, Tom and I. We need each other. We're... We're so complete together. But we still have the basic fact of his disappearance. Yes, but all you can see are two alternatives. There is a third, you know. Really? Perhaps he was taken ill suddenly and he just wandered off. Oh, maybe I should go back uh, there. I've and... already been back there. There's no place he could have wandered off to. Tell me, does he have a history of any sort of illness, amnesia, oh, anything like that? No, nothing like that. Well, then, where are we? Nowhere. Perhaps you are nowhere, Mr. Peterson. Okay, tell me where you are. I have faith. I believe Tom will be found, or he will find himself, and he will have an absolutely reasonable and rational explanation. I hope so. Hetty! Oh! Hetty! Tom! Oh, Tom, darling. Tom, what happened to you? I was so scared. Oh, darling, you're all right. Hetty, are you all right? Yes. I don't understand. I happened to tune in the news, and there it was. Tom Parsons' accountant with offices in the Barstow building had disappeared under mysterious circumstances. Oh, Tom, I was so worried. Mr. Parsons was driving with his wife. He stepped out of the car to clean off the rear window and... Hetty, what did you tell them? I wasn't in the car with you. I was at home. <laughs> Well, here we have the story of two people who love each other deeply, who trust each other completely. It sounds like the Garden of Eden. But we all know what happened back there in the traffic and the snow. We shall return shortly with Act Two. You've seen these couples, or rather heard of them. They dwell in a sea of perfect harmony, never a ripple of discord. But when they do have a disagreement, well, it's a beaut. Here we have Fred Peterson listening to Hetty and Tom Parsons having a fantastic difference of opinion. Tom! Tom, how can you say that? Hetty, darling, I was not in the car with you. I was home. Home. You said, let's get out of this miserable cold and snow. Let's head south for a couple of weeks. Hetty, when did I say that? How could I say that? Uh, you know I'm swamped with work at the office. You came home this afternoon, Tom. You said, how would you like to leave for Florida tonight? And I said, give me an hour to pass. Uh, uh, excuse me. Who's he? Oh, he's just... A... I'm just Fred Peterson of the Union Messenger. A reporter? Oh, please, 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 don't be alarmed. I assure you it's a thoroughly respectable profession. Well, I... I see no point in... Well, emblazoning this all over the newspapers. Is there anything to emblazon, as you put it? This is a private affair. Tom, tell me what happened. What happened to you after you left me? Eddie, I told you I never left. Tom. How could I have left you? I wasn't with you. Oh, no, Tom. This time I have witnesses. 
The police officer, he knows you went out to clear the rear window. How does he know? Because he... Because you told him, Mr. Parsons. Now, obviously, your wife seems distraught. I would suggest... Keep your suggestions to yourself, Mr. Peterson. Don't you dare imply that I'm overwrought or nervous or hysterical. I am completely calm, extremely rational, and absolutely in command of myself. I know what happened this evening. Mr. Peterson, this is obviously a private matter between my wife and me and nobody's business but ours. What did you mean, Mrs. Parsons... When you said that this time you had witnesses, have there been other times when... Hetty, it doesn't do us any good to air this in public. All right, Tom. Take me home. Uh, let me talk to that officer at the desk there. Find out if there's anything we have to do. Well? Well what? Friend, husband, Tom. He didn't turn out to be quite as advertised. And what is that supposed to mean? He isn't quite the sweetest, mildest, most obliging guy on earth, is he? He is to me. I guess it's all a matter of how these words are defined, isn't it? And about this oh-so-complete understanding between the two of you. Won't you at least admit you're having a difference of opinion right now? I don't have to admit anything. Okay, okay, don't shoot. I'll go quietly. Are you sure you really want me to go? Please. Regardless... Of what you say to me, you are in trouble. No, I... no, don't deny it. Well, what if I am? I'd like to help you. Why? Because... Would because... you want to help me if I were middle-aged and fat and sloppy and ugly? It isn't ten minutes ago. You accused me of living in a world where no one trusted the next fellow or believed in him. You accused me of being a confirmed cynic. Is it possible you don't remember what you say from one minute to the next? I'm sorry. Don't be. There's a great deal to what you said. You're kind, but no one can help you. I could try. And no one should try, either. Why not? It's too dangerous. That was the wrong thing to say to me. I'm warning you. You're only getting me in deeper. Please, Fred. For openers, my business is to take chances and get myself into... Hey, you know what happened? What? You called me Fred. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have. But you did, and that means we're friends. Look, I only want... You're the one who set up the ground rules for this thing. First names are for friends only. Please, forget what happened here tonight. I warn you... You already warned me twice. It won't work. I can only warn you three times. Do you mean you keep score? Please don't joke, Fred. You keep saying the wrong word, or I should say the wrong name. The wrong name is Fred. You can't call me Fred and expect me to forget everything. I warn you. I warn you for the third time. Forget all about tonight for your own sake, for your own safety. And after saying all that, you still expect me to forget about it. I... Tell my husband I'll wait for him outside in the car. Wait a minute, Hetty. I warned you, Fred. I warned you three times. Now, goodbye. Where's my wife? She said she'd meet you in the car. Uh... Mr. Peterson, if I were you, I'd forget everything that happened tonight. Is that a threat? No, a warning. That's all I've been getting around here, warnings. Well, for your own good, take them seriously. And if I don't? You'll regret it for the rest of your life, which may not be a long one. You still insist that you're not threatening me? I'm only trying to help you. Really? And why should you do that? Why? <laughs> I don't know why. Maybe it's because the last guy tried to help me. What last guy? I didn't listen to him. The last guy? What do you mean? Uh, nothing. Forget it. You know, with you and your wife, it seems, everything turns out to be nothing and forget I it. don't think it matters now. I have an idea. It's already too late for you. I'm sorry. Good night, Mr. Peterson. Hey, Fred. Fred. Yeah, Lieutenant, I'm coming. Well? Well, what? There's nothing there for us boys in blue. What's in it for the fourth estate? Looks like he's trying to drive her nuts. It could also be the other way around. I don't think so. Because of that honey-colored blonde oh, hair? Lieutenant, Lieutenant, you always know where the exposed nerve is. Just stop and figure it. Couldn't this also be her way of trying to drive him nuts? As a reporter, I would have to say yes. But, uh... As a man? I don't know. Well, you got a problem, Fred. How are you going to tackle it? As a reporter? Or as a man? Good 
money. Oh, Fred, what are you doing here? Won't you ask me to come in? Well, I... You could also offer me a cup of coffee. It's been a long drive on a cold morning. Oh, well, I suppose you might as well come inside. How gracious. I'm sorry. I'm... Uh, well, I'm, I'm still upset, and you should know why. Come into the kitchen. I was just pouring myself a cup. Thanks. Charming place you have here. Thank you. I suppose Tom is generous enough when it comes to money and things. The implication being that he is not generous when it comes to what? Fred, if you insist on talking about Tom, I'll have to ask you to leave. Okay, let's talk about you. No. We can't talk about me either. What can we talk about? The weather, politics, sports. You'd be surprised I'm a very well-informed person. We could talk about art. Or literature? I didn't come here to talk about those things. I know why you came here. Do you? Fred, I'm a married woman. But you're not a happily married woman. I'm happy enough. Okay. Let me tell you why I'm here. As a reporter, that is. It doesn't happen very often that you get a chance to be in on a story before it's a story. You follow me? No. Last night, all I could have gotten out of it might have been a squib on the back page. Or maybe nothing. But something's happening here. Something's building. I don't know what it is. But one of you is lying. One of you is trying to destroy the other. And you think you can stop it? Oh, no, that's not my job. But there's going to be an explosion. And I want to be there when it blows. Because then I'll have a story. And that's all this is. That's all I am to you. A story. I was talking as a reporter... But as a man... Yes? As a man, I'd... I'd like to help you, Hattie. Even if it meant losing your story? Yes. I'd like to believe that. Why can't you? I tried to warn you, Fred. Look, we had all that last night. I can't warn you anymore, but remember, I did warn you. Yeah, sure. Don't brush it aside, Fred. Hetty, on the general subject of warnings... I've had a few in my day. From gangsters, from politicians. I mean from people who had clout. But I did warn you... Look, if you want me to, I'll sign a receipt. Let the record show that you warned me. You were right. He is trying to destroy me. Ah, finally. Why? I don't know. Okay, let's go through the standards. Is he after your money? I don't have any... Another woman? I don't think so. Is he tired of you? I don't know. Well... None of this is very helpful. I'm sorry. What was this business you were giving me back in the station house about your perfect marriage, about your perfect husband? Because he is. It's just... Well, now and then he, he imagines things like last night. What's now and then? Oh, every few months. One time he stranded me up in Maine. Another time we were supposed to go to Europe. He told me he would be delayed and to get on the plane he would make the next one. And there I was, all by myself in Paris. He denied everything. Has he seen a doctor? Yes. And? It hasn't done any good. Is he overworked? Oh, yes. Well, maybe he needs a long vacation. I'm sure of it. It all sounds pretty simple to me, except for one little item. Why have you insisted on warning me? Because it was the right thing to do. I don't understand. First, you imply that everything is so simple. Then when I start to believe it, you drop a little suggestion that throws me off balance. I, I can't seem to get anything definite out of you. Oh, but you did. What was that? A warning. Lieutenant Carroll. Hey, Lieutenant. Yeah, how goes the Parson case? How did you know I was going to ask you about the Parson? That honey blonde hair. Does it really show that much? Pal, you are hooked. You know something? That's true. And she may even be playing me like a fish. So what can I do for you? Well, no crime has been committed yet, but you can bet there's one on the way. Well, till then, we're handcuffed around here. Sure, but you got all the facts. What facts? I mean, I mean you can get at them in a routine way. Work up both of them, some past histories. That's spending the taxpayers' money. You spend the taxpayers' money every day. Something's ready to blow up there. Just be ready for it. That's all I'm asking. Actually, Fred, if you want the truth, we've already started. And? 
Keep in touch. Yeah? They said you're in this office. Well, look who's here. Tom, Tom, the Piper's son. Come on in, sir. Mr. Peterson, I've decided to tell you everything. Because... Because I know you're in love with my wife. Oh, wait a minute. Now, there are all kinds of meaningless expressions. Wait a minute, see here, hold on, or if you... Let's dispense with them. You can't accuse me. I don't accuse you. I state a fact. Well, then let's be fair. I only met your wife last night. I, I admit she's attractive. Uh, I don't even know her. <laughs> That's what I told him. That's what you told who? The last guy. The last guy she was married to. <sighs> I wish I knew how to start this. Well... Start at the beginning. Okay. I'm an accountant. You're a reporter. Both of us are men of the world. I, I mean this world. You live on facts. I live on figures. So how can I tell you? How can I expect you to believe me when I say... that Hetty... isn't a human being at all? She isn't? No. She's a witch. A witch. Yes, that's what he said. A witch. But how can it be? Wasn't all that witch business over and done with more than 200 years ago? Well, that's what we intend to find out shortly when I return with Act Three. Parsons and Fred Peterson sit in a newspaper office. Both are young, alert, stylishly dressed, every bit the modern, sophisticated men of today. And yet, the subject, the very serious subject under discussion is witchcraft, of all things. Well, it isn't every day a man accuses his wife of being a witch. It isn't every day a man finds out he's married to one. I can only say... It's incredible. I know. That's what I said when he told me. When who told you? The last guy. Tell me about the last guy. I met Hetty on a cruise ship about five years ago. She said her husband had just somehow disappeared. She was distraught. <laughs> you know, she does the distraught bit to perfection. I know nothing of the kind. What happened? Had he, had he fallen overboard? Well, that's... That's what she made everybody think. Till we got a radiogram from shore. He claimed he knew nothing about the trip. Well, either he had boarded the boat or he hadn't. Okay, let's get all of that cleared away. There was a ticket in his name. There were some people who claimed they had seen him. The trouble is, there was a pretty drunk bond voyage party. Most everybody was in no shape to remember anything. Oh, yes... Yes, the steward did claim to have seen him aboard, but... But? I'm convinced the steward was bribed. So I bought her story. I fell in love with her. Just as you did. And I helped her kill him. Just as you're going to help her kill me. You know what I think? I know what you think. You think I'm a nut. You could look it up. Five years ago, Stacy's Mountain Bill Lodge in the Adirondacks. She called me. She was desperate. Come up here. He's going to kill me. I flew up. I found them. They were near a cliff. She was screaming for help. I started fighting him off. I I guess he slipped. He, he fell over the side. He was killed. Look it up. Coroner's office. You'll see. An accident. Let's assume I buy all this. How does it make her a witch? Oh. She told me. She'll tell you afterwards. She's a witch. She falls in love with men, gets tired of them, and destroys them. I think you must I know. be... I know. I'm here to warn you. But I'm going to kill her first. Let me get you a cup of coffee. You're a fool... I'm here to save your life. Sure, sure. Okay. Look her up. I mean that. See if you can find a trace of her. See if you can find out where or when she was born, who her parents were. 
She has absolutely no background. I tell yeah, you... Don't, don't, don't. Don't oh, get good excited. Lord, this is all so familiar. All of this is what he said to me. And what I said to him. Back there, before I killed him. Now, nobody's going to kill anybody. I don't know you. But you look like a nice guy. Take my advice. Save yourself. Save yourself. I'm not sure I should be here with you tonight, Fred. Well, you wouldn't let me visit you at home. Oh, it just wouldn't look right. Yeah, but it's all on the level. I'm a newspaper man. It's business. I'm doing a story. I had a very proper upbringing. Where were you raised, Hetty? I'd rather not talk about it. Why? Well, I told you it was proper, but it wasn't happy. I shouldn't say this, but there were times when I thought my parents were ogres. <coughs> Fred, is something wrong? No, 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 no. Gee, I, I just hope I, I, I didn't spell anything on you. No. I didn't have a happy childhood. I, I don't like to discuss it. Here's something we should discuss. I spoke with Tom this morning. I think I know what he told you. So far out, I even hesitate to mention it, but obviously he believes it. I insisted that he see a psychiatrist. In fact, we both went. And it's the doctor's opinion that Tom is riddled with guilt. You see, he thinks he murdered Larry. Larry? My first husband. But Larry was a brute. I was very young and... We're really too young to know anything about people. Larry was a drunk. I didn't know that either. And when he had a few, he would abuse me. Well, I shouldn't have done it, but I was terrified. I called Tom, and he came up and got into a fight with Larry, and, well, there was that accident. But why should he get that far-out notion about you? According to the doctor, it had to be something... Well, something he could live with, something that could justify what he did, and he really has a vivid imagination. He strikes me as a very sober-minded person, aside He was from... a lit major at college. He became an accountant because he had to make a living. I... I don't know what I'm going to do about him, Fred. I've had so much trouble in my life, and... He's really a wonderful guy, and I love him. Why does he want to destroy us? Why should he have a guilty conscience about Larry? Whatever happened was in self-defense. Well, look, everything will turn out all right. Oh, you're only saying that because you have to say something. No, I believe it. Hello? Tom? Yes, it's Tom. But you said you were working late. Well, I am. I just took a break for dinner. Join you? Please. Fred, you obviously didn't hear a word I said this morning, did you? I heard every word. Heard them all and listened to none? Tom, you're not well, and I think we Oh, I be... know what you think. You think we should go away for a rest and all that. Forget it. I know what I have to do, and I'm going to do it. <laughs> Poor Fred. I feel sorry for you. You're in love with her. To keep the record straight, I'm a reporter. There's a story here. I aim to get it. Sure, sure. That's what you tell yourself. Let's go along with you, Tom. Suppose what you say is true. Suppose she's what you say she is. Why not walk out? Get a divorce. I can't. Why? I hope you never find out. You see, she destroys you. She takes away your capacity to love. Your feelings, your mind. It's as if you're only just nourishment for her. And when everything you have to give is gone, she discards you for someone else. Tom, for your own sake, I think you should be under a doctor's care in a hospital. I suppose I should. But I want to save you. It'll make up for Larry. I must apologize, Fred, for exposing you to all this. I shouldn't have come here. But you wanted to expose him to all this. That's why you came here. You knew I always eat here when I work late. Tom, I'll do anything you want. Just tell me. <laughs> Disappear. As a supernatural person, you can arrange that without any problem. Please, Fred, go now. Leave us alone. But I don't want to... He's my problem. I have to live with it. And if you stay, well... An audience always excites him. Ah, now, 
look who finally showed up. What happened to that Nobel Prize for Journalism you were working on? Lieutenant, there is no Nobel Prize for Journalism. Oh. Well, what happened anyhow? I got off it all. Couldn't make heads or tails. Well, we're still on it. As a matter of fact, information keeps pouring in all the time. On her? On him. Funny duck. He was always interested in spirits, that kind of thing. He wrote his master's thesis on something called uh, demonology. Well, there's nothing there for me. As a man or a reporter? Both. You know, I've been married ten years, and I've never been tempted. But if I could be, she could do it. Oh, that dame or something. I'm surprised at you, Lieutenant. But there's hope for you. If what you say about the husband is true, he winds up uh, in the loony bin, and after a respectable interval, she could be yours. That's what's in your mind, right? You are the most cynical person I know. Come off it. We're two of a kind. I'd even wait for her myself. Lieutenant Carroll. Is uh, Fred Peterson there, please? Hold on, I'll see. It's uh, the girl you love. Cut it out. Okay, the girl we love. You hear? Yeah. Yeah, I guess I'm here. Take it. Hello? Fred, I'm scared. What's the matter, Hetty? Don't ask any questions. Just come to my place. Quickly. Come in, Fred. Oh, darling, I'm so glad you're here. Hetty, Hetty, why are you shaking like that? I'm frightened. I'm so frightened. Please, please, Hetty, calm down. I'm here. Everything is going to be all right. I know it. I know. It's wrong for me to talk to you like this. To feel like this. But I, I can't help no, it. No, no, we'll work it out. Somehow we'll work it out. No, no, no. Why are you scared? I. He asked me to take his suit to the cleaners this morning. And I found this in his pocket. It's a receipt. Read it. From Carrington's one double action Danforth Wilson revolver, caliber thirty two. He bought a gun. Don't you see? He bought a gun. All right. Why would he buy a gun if he didn't want to kill me? Well, I think we have enough to interest the police now. Are you sure about that? Tom. Well, answer the question, Fred. What do you expect from the police? I have a permit for this gun. I have every right to own it. Now look, Tom, I get very nervous when people point guns at me. Maybe it's unreasonable, but do you, uh, do you mind putting that, that thing away? Well, I will. After I use it. No, Tom. Don't be a fool. You're not a killer. I always thought that. Till just now. Tom, listen. Let's say you're right. That she is a witch, okay? Don't you see? You couldn't kill her anyhow. You'd empty the gun at her. It wouldn't mean a thing. Fine. Why don't we find out? I won't no. let you. Get away from me, Fred. No. Come on, step up. Get behind me, Get behind me, Fred. Give me that gun. gun. If you no. move, I'll kill you, too. Run. Just no. lower it. Drop it. Take no. it. Get. Get. I'm going to kill her. No, drop it. Drop it. No. Oh. 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 Tom. You did it. Again, Eddie. It did it. Again. Call a doctor, Eddie. Oh. oh. <laughs> what for? Oh, you poor sucker. You think she... Oh, she's not worth it. Uh. You think she's paradise? <laughs> she is. Ah, uh, she is. But it doesn't last. It doesn't last. Uh. And then... She'll kill you. She'll kill you, too. Tom. He's... He's dead. Tom. You saw, you saw there was nothing I, I could do. I know. I know. Better call, please. Lieutenant Carroll. Lieutenant, it's Fred. Hey, Fred, I got news for you. What I mean is I have absolutely no news for you. Lieutenant, listen to me. You know, we, we drew a complete blank on that dame. We trace her back to St. Louis City Hall, where she married a guy named Larry Bellows. She gave her home address as Charterville, Illinois. But there's no such place. Listen, Lieutenant. It's as if this dame just materialized out of thin air. No background at all. Wait a minute. 
Eddie. Who are you? Hello? Oh, Fred. Fred, why did you call? Who are you, Eddie? Fred, what's on your mind? Eddie. I warned you three times, Fred. I warned you three times. And how many warnings would you have needed? Or heeded? That's the trouble. When they have honey blonde hair, it's so hard to take them seriously. A mistake. You should always take every woman seriously. We'll be back shortly. Are there really witches? Everyone must keep his own counsel on the matter. However, if you should happen upon a damsel in distress, and she has honey blonde hair and baby blue eyes, remember, we warned you three times. Our cast included Joan Loring, Mason Adams, Tom Keena, Alan Manson, and Sam Gray. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Now, a preview of our next tale. Look at me, Mama. Listen to me call you that, Mama. A grown man, 38 years old. Tied to his mother's apron strings like, like some sniveling little boy. Father's life wasn't his own either. You killed him. You, you are mad. Keep away. Keep away. You want to kill me. I'm not going to kill you, Mama. You know I haven't got the strength of will for that. Oh, oh, of course you won't, son. But you can have anything you want now we've had this little talk. Now, now please get Hannah like a good boy. Oh, no, Mama. I don't need you anymore. You left me everything in your will. But I'm not dead. To all the world except me, you are. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time. Pleasant dreams. The preceding Mystery Theater program was furnished by the CBS Radio Network.